What's up everyone? This is the sweater weather tournament. It is going to be fixed wind direction for everybody. This is pro content, so a little bit more advanced content. And we are just going to go through. This is the first round qualifier. And as you can see, a very nice wind here. Um, you know, this, this is kind of a primed hole to go for a big shot. So... Definitely what I would recommend is trying to pull something out and just see what this looks like. I'm going to give myself some top spin, maybe even some more top spin. Utilize one of these pins. If you guys haven't seen the pin packs in the shop, highly recommend getting them. Uh, you'll see some really cool pins out there that let you just, you can see I can crank that spin up to 100 just like that. So this is going to be huge for being able to get your tee shots a lot longer. You'll see this Pro DX ball is very accurate. Lots of carry. And let's just see if we can get up there. All the way to this last fairway here up by the green. So you could see, you know, maybe maybe one pin away, adding a little bit of extra power or something, maybe we can get it up on there. So something for you guys to think about. But you can see with where I am, and hopefully this is very minimal on the wind play. You're gonna see that I'm just gonna kind of creep this left edge of the cup with a nice tailwind. Should fly very straight. Let's just see if we can't get this first one to roll in. So you can see, there it is. We are through with an eagle on the very first hole. So very straightforward, nice, easy start for you guys. Uh, highly recommend those Pro DX balls. I recommend you guys being able to, uh, you know, take advantage of some of these pin combinations as well. You'll see, you'll be able to do some really cool stuff. Now, for Pro Division, you know, consider you're going to be winning the Pro Trophy Balls. So that's a good, this is a good free-to-play free ball for you guys to use. So this is what I'm going to use for most situations. And especially after we got off to a strong start, this is a good idea to pot potentially utilize some of your practice. So here you can see we got... What I, what I like doing is putting just a little bit of side spin. It keeps it from making it run into the pin. So we're going to do some right spin. We're going to pull up our calculator. Do something like this. Forget how many rings this was for max. I know it was at least a full bullseye or so, a couple bullseyes. 5, 10, 15. And the biggest thing that I'm just doing right now is just trying to get a reference. So let's just say that this was 20 rings for max just for, you know, we just need to get that reference, figure out what this reference value is. So 8.77 it's saying. So let's just put this ball guide maybe, let's call it two and a half rings from the pin. So you can see when I turn this to the side, it's two and a half rings. This ball guide's going to collapse down, so I need to factor that in for my shot. But this is saying 877, one pull, 877. So that's going to be my true shot because I'm just going to utilize a practice here. Now what this does is it just changes the wind slightly. Very So we go from 8.77 to 9.3. But this is the reference that we need. So if we're going to go 9.3, let's try this right here. And as I mentioned, this is more or less than anything just essentially a reference for us. So here you can see. Ball is in the air, coming in nice, and there's that collapsing of the ball guide that you see. That actually looks really good. You can see how much it came back. So maybe on my live attempt, I just shift it just slightly, just ever so gently. And I believe it was 4-7. So we're going to come back, we're going to do 4-7. I might just get just a little bit more aggressive. So what are the changes that we need to make? I'm thinking maybe just a little bit more left spin. So we're going to utilize just a little bit more left spin. 
and we're going to crowd the hole just a little bit more as well. So something to the effect of this, like 2.4 rings from the pin instead of 2.5. You're seeing I'm just creeping in just gently. Because you saw it had no problem backing up. So let's give this a go. 8.77. Somewhere right around here. So let's just give this a go, see what it looks like. Here it comes in, very nice. Oh, oh wow, look at that. So behind the pin, it doesn't back up. So you do have to keep it just a little bit tighter. I was expecting it to fire down a little bit. Um, and this is where, you know, multiple practices that could help, um, you know, if you were to burn a couple or, but you can see the differences, you almost don't want to try to back it into the cup because you could see what happened when I tried to back it into the cup. It just sat up on top of the hill there. So you do have to almost land it parallel or just behind the cup and just try to maybe more gently right spin it but that's what you guys can do is you can kind of use my guide and then just kind of make a slight tweak and if you want to just do one practice on top of that you know even better now here you can see We got, you know, one of the things I was going to try to do was carry this over. You can see where I'm aiming kind of right in line with this last tree, perhaps. I'm just going to kind of reference aim this, slice it kind of as hard as I can. See if we can't get this over into the, oh, it just clipped that tree. But this is a... Uh, one of those things that we're just testing here this is for your benefit as well so you know more so for you guys than it is for me so let's just kind of gently pull this over just a little bit more so you can see this is a couple rings into this orange tree and let's just see if that's enough to compensate and get it to miss this tree so you can see it comes over and it looks like all is good Ooh. It's still too aggressive though. And if you guys want to burn through some practice on this, this is a good way to practice. If I didn't do the practice. So this could be a very good way to practice if you were to utilize it. Maybe the one thing that I'm missing is maybe just a little bit of power. Oh, and I'm actually fixed now, so I'm kind of fixed on this hole. If I come over here, can I get over? I can get over on the other divisions, and that's why I keep kind of trying to do this. But that's what's nice about a qualifier. You have enough time. Oh, you can see it's getting very close. So if we just had one extra pin, we could just kind of slice it over into that fairway. I just want to at least let you guys know about that. And we'll just play this with the layup. You can play it either way that you want. I at least want to show you guys that just so you have it in your arsenal and keep in mind this is only qualifier one for you guys so you don't have to qualify today you have two extra attempts so qualifying round two qualifying round three so it's you're okay to make mistakes is basically what I'm telling you so you might as well play around because you could see when we lay up here we're gonna be very close to the max club on the hellfire so very close to max here and all we're going to do is kind of collapse this ball guide kind of put it right into the hole something like that see if i can get restore this purchase real quick get myself on the hellfire hellfire six wind direction about this 2.76 with this wind direction. So let's give that a go. See what this looks like. So 
And a lot of times on these big rings, I utilize my zoom and get it into that perfect amount where you see that I have everything scaled out for myself. Something like this. Just a little bit more zoom. There we go. And we're going to do 276, which is right in between these two. So let's try right here. Ball guide right on the hole. The only thing I'm a little worried about is maybe some left effect. It's kind of an uphill shot. I think the bounces may be a little bit left, and that's exactly what happened. So when you're uphill, what you're going to see, you saw that happen there, and the bounces just roll out to the left. Because it's coming in uphill, just causes the ball to bounce more in the direction the wind, that the wind is pointed. There was also some slope there as well, but it was a combination of both of those factors. So do keep that in mind. But you have that guide to use. And you can easily be aggressive on that hole and potentially get the eagle from back there in that part of the fairway. Here's about 10 rings from Max. So let's see if we can't set this up about 10 rings from Max with the wind directional arrow. Something like this. About 10 rings from Max on the spot up. This is telling me right around 10, 7 rings. You can see I'm keeping that ball guide pretty much right on the hole. Shouldn't collapse down too much. So I'm going to do this first pull real quick. Right around there, 0.7 rings. And we're just going to go one full bar, one full bullseye. Try to get this lined up as best as we can. So let's go right there. Give this a whirl. And again, like I mentioned, you know, these par threes, these are primed for you guys to utilize. Ooh, looks a little bit light there. So it probably has to do with pulling up to high ground. So you'll see any time that you do pull up to higher ground, which I did, you're going to see that it kind of will overplay on you a little bit. So 10, 7 there, not going to be enough rings. You're going to want to kind of overplay that. And another question is, did I go a full 10, 7? Or was it like more 10, 6, 10, 5? You know, I might have been just a little cavalier with the way that I was pulling my rings. Sometimes I uh, get into rush mode. Or I'll just kind of rush through things a little too much. Let's try to bring this in. See a nice tailwind here. This was about, what, two, three rings for Max? Somewhere like this. Switch the club. Or chat a five, four, six, three rings. So it looks like I'm going to be playing through the trees on this one. I'll just try to do just over three rings. I'm going to right around here. Let's just see how this comes in. Another really great hole to potentially use your uh, practice tokens for. And you can see we're in there very tight. It's because that's for Eagle. This is a par four, so when we drive this green, we're getting lots and lots of tiebreaker points. So, and you can also see that we can get an ace there. Keep in mind, this is your best hole to ace. So practicing on this is really gonna inflate that. Your tiebreaker will go from 1800 to 2700. So it's gonna be a huge increase in tiebreaker points if you're able to get that ace. So that's the biggest one that you guys wanna think about potentially going for. Now one of the things that I'm going to do for this one, I'm going to pull out a ball, pa uh, ball pin. Try to make sure that I get this up into wedge distance. The other thing I could do is just utilize a top spin pin. So these pins are for your benefit to kind of just get you in those situations where you can always stay within a perfect club, stuff like that. 
So I'm utilizing this just to make sure we get this drive down here as far as possible. We're going to open up Hive. So let me just start getting this in the works here. Like I mentioned, we're going to try to do the Hive here. So Hive. We're going to open up our scaled Hive. This is what Hives looks like. You can see here, so, so I didn't even need that pin. I just wanted to make sure. You can see there's Max Club. We're just going to size this up and say the hole itself is 70 70 percent 72 percent somewhere around there i'm setting up right in front of the hole like this so 70 72 percent we're just going to bring it in just like this it's going to be a game of inches So 4, 8, 70, 72, like I mentioned, almost 7 exact, four, 6, 9, 7. And like I mentioned, it's kind of like a game of inches on this shot. So you're going to see that it's going to be one or two tick marks is all that's going to be the difference between holding and not holding. And you can see this is for a double eagle. So this is one you really want to take advantage of as well. Very short par five there. So driver wedge, huge hole for you to get those tiebreaker points. So make sure you're capitalizing on that. Another huge tailwind here. This is a very good hole to eventually bring out some, this is a driver wood pin, which you're gonna see is gonna extend my target. We're going to pull out one of our Pro D's as well with the pin. Ball power as well. This is really going to extend the target. So from what I've seen in the past, this thing that you're seeing with the, the ball guide there is just kind of like a cosmetic glitch. You're going to see that this ball gets up here definitely farther than it should. So wherever you see the target, you'll see that it really, in fact, I actually got that over the green. So that's even too much. <laughs> so you guys can utilize that guide to your advantage. You might be able to peel off one of these. You might not be able to. Yeah, so I think my gear's set. So what we're going to do this time is kind of change our spin up a little bit. Try to keep it short of the green, but you, you get the idea of what we're doing. We're trying to basically drive this green and just get the right amount of spin on it. That looks a little bit better. It was about four bars, maybe even two bars. The other thing that you can do is just mess around with your pin combination. You can see I didn't even need the pin combination I had. So that's what I would do if I was to modify that shot. But once you've hit, you're kind of fixed. But here, as you can see, um, had we not drove that first one too far, would have easily got the eagle. And ideally, you want to get that ball on the green for the tiebreaker points. And that's what these guides are about, is just kind of giving you guys the shots. You guys, since you guys are going to have fixed winds, you're going to have the same wind directions. You can just make improvements off of my guides, and then you guys can shoot lower rounds than me. It's basically, that's, that's the goal here, is to get you guys squared away, so you guys are shooting the lowest rounds that you possibly can with minimal effort. And, you know, it might be one of those things that you don't even think to pull that shot out until you see me do it. I'm just here for you guys to give you guys that guidance that you need. Here you can see we keep this one left to the fairway. And why is that? Because the wind is pointed a little bit to the right. You're going to see over here it's going to straighten out this guide. So this is just another aid to benefit you guys. As you'll see, the ball guide is going to be much straighter over here. And we're going to use the top spin model. 
and it looks like maybe about 56 percent so 56 percent club make sure you keep on tailwinds like this keep the ball guide just short of the hole so you see that i keep it just short four or five four or five rings the ball guide's going to stretch out after it has wind effects so that's why we keep it short Right there. So here it comes in, as you can see, stretches out and right into the left side of the cup. So I almost got just a little bit too aggressive with the way that I kept the ball guide to the left, but as you can see, no harm done. And uh, we shot plenty good, especially for the mistakes we had. Um, very fun, enjoyable course to put low numbers up on. So hopefully you guys are getting that same enjoyment out of this course. This is another big hole where you want to easily make sure you get these tiebreaker points. So that's what you can see that I'm taking advantage of right now. Just kind of setting my spin. Make sure that we can land on this fairway here. Maybe right around three rings. Full curl. You want to make sure that you get on this green, and that's why I'm pulling out this power pin. Make sure we don't go into max club, because you're going to get so many tiebreaker points. 1,600 total here. So quite a few tiebreaker points for you. There it is. A little bit of trouble pulling that ball, but uh, there it is. And as you can see, we easily get through on this qualifier. Um, you know, similarly with you guys. <laughs> and you can see I even went, you know, bogey or double bogey on that one hole. And we went uh, birdie out of bounds on hole seven. So tons of room for you guys to shoot 16, 17, 18 under with ease on this course. And that's what this guide is uh, dedicated to doing is getting you guys on track. Uh, increasing your level of thinking on different shot making and abilities that you can do. Best of luck out there. Let me know how you guys do. Drop, drop your scores in the uh, comments and whatnot. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Take care.